Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at the NFL TAC Conference in Denver. I'm with Dash Flynn from AWS, your principal sports consultant. Uh, that's uh, kind of a fancy title. Uh, what, what do you do there? So really what it means is I work with our sports customers uh, to translate business objectives into tactical use cases, and then I work with our technical teams, theirs, and partners to go deliver on those use cases. Yeah. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, so we're at the NFL show, Yeah. so that makes some sense that you're here. Uh, I know the, the NFL and the AWS have had a long-standing relationship, mm -hmm. uh, several years, so could you, uh, before we get into what you're showing here, mm -hmm. talk about that relationship and why it's been so successful. Yeah, I think, I think it started, it's, we're in the third iteration now of our partnership, um, and we started very, very intentionally originally with what we call Next Gen Stats, yep. NGS. And that I was love the Next Gen Stats. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> that was the foundation of sort of partnership 1.0, mm -hmm. um, and it's been throughout. And then now with 2.0, we really leaned into building out the digital athlete. Uh, so there's a whole vision around how can we create a digital twin for athletes to be able to evaluate uh, you know, dangerous situations, find out uh, the, you know, rule changes that will help make the game safer, that sort of thing. And that was the anchor of 2.0. And then as we get into 3.0, we're really expanding on that digital athlete and the player health and safety partnership. Yeah, well, certainly everyone wants analytics. And I guess uh, mm -hmm. um, it's used in all kinds of different ways across sports now. So uh, it's interesting to see it used at the athlete level. Uh, now, you're actually here demoing that, right? Some NFL yes. digital athlete. Yep. And so you touched on it, but can you go into a little bit the detail and what it is, how it works, who it's for? Yeah, absolutely. So the foundation of the digital athlete is the integration of all a, a range of data sources around performance on the field and correlated down to the frame level or synchronized at the frame level with injury occurrence. And so being able to understand exactly when an injury occurs, um, what the dynamics of the movement into that, act, in, into that injury were, how many times head impacts have occurred before there was or was not a concussion, those kinds of things, to be able to understand and identify what kinds of activities, what kind of motions and movements impact injury occurrence and then be able to, to reduce them over time time is the foundational goal. But one of the things we really saw with the, and built out the team portal for the digital athlete is that teams then have the ability to use that data around how much load they're having, how much they're running during the week in practice versus on Sunday on game day, uh, and understand how to optimize their training schedules in preseason and during the season, how to compare running backs against, their running backs against uh, for time loss, how much average time loss to an injury, and are they coming back faster or slower, that sort of thing. Well, that's a lot of data. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a lot of interesting stuff. How, how are you collecting the data, or how's the league collecting the data? Yeah, so there's a there's a range of data sources. Um, the the core is next gen stats, yeah. so the the tracking data that gives you that x y coordinate data, and that's built off like RFID tags and the pads right. and the and camera vision as well, right? Yeah, there's an integrated yeah. the yeah. core NGS data is the, is the is the sensors in the shoulder pads that are generating the x y location data, um, but then we also do use computer vision and, and video to, to generate some of the data. So one of the areas we really looked at is around head impacts and being able to take that video. We have one computer vision model that identifies where in the video all 20 22 helmets are. We integrate that with NGS to understand who's in each helmet and then automatically detect when helmet impact occur, whether it's helmet to helmet, helmet to body, or helmet to ground, to build that robust data set to understand, and from an impact perspective, what is and is not correlated with injury. That's oh, fascinating. And uh, so who's the data for? Is it the coaches, the athletes themselves, the team? Yes, the, I mean, te technically all of the above. Um, more often than not, what we really see with the digital athlete and the team portal is that it's the team training staff working with the coaches and then the working with the players to really understand okay. what those trends they're seeing are, how to optimize practice, how to reduce injury occurrence. Maybe you're shifting a lot of, a lot of practice time in the NFL happens during preseason and being able to adjust, not take a player out of all practices, yeah. but they're at a higher risk, you know, do low impact training today and tomorrow mm -hmm. they can go back to high impact and that'll really smooth the curve around risk. And the teams that have used it, have they noticed a, a drop off in injuries? Like is there, uh, how are they measuring the success? So they yeah. they don't tell us that back. Yeah. That, that sort of stays with the team when they look at exactly how, sort of the impact they're having. Um, we are starting to track as we go uh, what the time loss is and seeing a reduction in, in time lost to injuries, uh, both in preseason pre and during the season, but we're still building mm -hmm. enough of a robust set to do, you know, causal yeah. confirmation. I guess that's the war, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, and how's the data accessed by the coaches and teams? Is it yeah, so they have, a, they have a whole portal now. Okay. Um, and in within the digital athlete team portal, uh, there's a, a, a core dashboard that provides them a sort of a set num a set, set of graphics that they're, they're typically looking at. And then there's a whole series of dashboards they can drill down into, right? So if you're looking at time loss, you're looking at ACL versus uh, ankle injuries, you're looking at head impacts. Um, and then there's a whole, uh, so 
on those dashboards is then a series of reports that automatically generate for each game that they can access from there too. Hmm. That's, that's, uh, that's fascinating stuff. And so as teams have deployed this, um, have you talked to the teams about how they've changed things because of the data that you're giving them? Yeah, a lot of, uh, and a lot of it again is anecdotal, specifically yeah. at the team level. Um, certainly, I'd say, well, I'll take a step back. There's two, two capabilities. One is that it's very much started to impact the rule set, like the change in the kickoff. A lot of that right. was driven by the, the digital athlete oh, and what we saw there. Yeah, okay. similar to the elimination of the hip drop tackle yeah. last season. So those are all like league level where we see very, very direct impacts. On the team level, again, they keep a lot of that to themselves because they're trying to find competitive advantage on the field. But anecdotally, we've very much heard about changing practice schedules to keep athletes who are at you know, specific risk level, high risk levels for specific injury types and of changing their practice schedule to accommodate that and, and lower that risk by having them out of, again, high impact drills, let's say for a day. When you think of how much money these players are getting paid, I mean, yeah. losing for, I mean, it's huge amounts of money, right? So Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, missing one game can have a significant impact on that. Well, in a 16 game season, missing one game could be the difference of making the playoffs or not. Too, exactly. Right? So yeah, it's a lot of interesting stuff. So last question, uh, what do you think is next for the partnership? Yeah, I think a lot of the, the focus going forward is really going to be around so sort of furthering the in you know the practice areas specifically, right? So being able to expand. Right now, there we're working through being able to capture uh, additional capabilities from practice video. We have tracking, but having video as well. So expansion of the the practice capabilities, oh. and then expanding the access points for how to use the digital athlete. Hmm. Something like a potentially a, a chatbot front end that allows you to semantically query. So if there isn't a dashboard already built, you'd be able to question directly, question and, and receive that data, receive a new report back or a new data set back, that sort of thing. Yeah, the use cases. This is pretty fascinating because you could actually run this all the way down to Pop Warner, and yeah, you, ideally, you yeah. know, and then as kids come up and they go to high school and college, they understand how to play the game differently, mm -hmm. right? And so thereby reducing injuries all the way through. Yes. Yeah. Oh no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's huh. that's spot on. That's absolutely what we'd like to yeah, see. Yeah, that's fascinating. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, anything else you want to add? No, this has been great. Thank you for yeah. the time. Well, I appreciate the update on uh, digital athlete. I guess uh, uh, all we hear about now is AI and digital twins. So <laughs> why not have digital twins of people? Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yes. so. So, so the digital twin has the injury, not the person. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. So on behalf of uh, uh, Dash Flynn, I'm Zia Scaravalli from ZK Research. And thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.